Um, man, well, welcome Southside to Black TV. Thank you. How you feeling? Good, man. Very, very great. How you feeling? Good. I mean, we got the legendary producer here today. Okay. You got 45 platinum certifications, billions of streams. Yeah, not for sure. How you sure, feeling? Sure. I feel good. I woke up this morning. That's the best thing of my life. That's what I'm saying. Another chance. I'm on that. I'm on that energy. I know you're a little tired. Nah, it's good. I'm good though. It's cool. They've been working you or what? Working, working. I told them I'm done after the day. Yeah. <laughs> I need a week off. I'm tired. Right. Yeah. I feel like this is the fun part of being an artist. You get to. Nah, I like the studio better. I I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. Man, well, if it's cool, we're gonna start at the very beginning. Um, you know, obviously people know you for your hit records. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, people would love to know just how you got started, your backstory. Um, um shh, man, my uncle, um, right. my uncle used to like just steal, you know, go to the airport and just steal shit sometimes, like, you know, and he ended up just stealing like a, um, he ended up stealing a computer with Fruit Loops on it. Oh, wow. And that's how I really started. Like, I just started using it and then we started, you know, buying, I started getting all my own stuff, the older I got and working for it, you know? Yeah. So my uncle really kind of put me in this shit. Yeah, I know he was a... He played an instrumental role in your career. Yeah, he, he played a big role in my career. Right. He played a big role. And your dad was a producer as well. He wanted to be inspiring. <laughs> yeah. Organized noise, though, that's... You know. My dad wasn't really... He, he wanted to be a part of organized noise. He was always in trouble. Those was his friends he grew up with. Oh, uh, okay. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, but he wanted to be. That's why I always wanted to be. My dad really didn't fuck with me when I was little. I didn't know my dad when I was little. Wow. So my thing was like, I'm going to try to be a producer. Maybe he'll fuck with me one day if I became this big producer. You know? So, you know, here we are. I was going to say, check you out now. Yeah. Dirty. So you've always wanted this. You've always wanted yeah, to be this I big producer. I to be a producer. Wow. Yeah. Not for sure. How did it feel playing Fruity Loops that, that, that you know, at the first time? Oh, uh, I, I just told somebody the other day, if I could find my first beat, I'd give him a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, like the very first beat I ever made. You know? Yeah. I, I wonder what it sounds like. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> like thousands and tens of thousands of beats later. Right. Yeah. That's funny. Man, how young were you when your parents had you? Um, My parents had my mom was 18. It was both 18. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's super young. Yeah, she was young. She was still in high school. She was in 12th grade. During the graduate. See, wow. Yeah. Does that mean that makes y'all extra close? That's my, my mom's my best friend. Right. Yeah, my mom's my best friend. How was she when you were, you know, because I think you play Little League Baseball. Yeah, I played baseball up until 14. Okay. Yeah, so. But my mom, she was just always, like, she wanted me to play baseball always. Like, you know, I'm ambidextrous. I use both of my hands. I know. I seen you both with your left hand last night. Yeah, I'm left hand. <laughs> I write with my left hand, but I do certain things with my right hand. So, but she always wanted me to uh, play sports. She saw me like, ah, you might need to get a job and stuff like that. <laughs> She'd be like, no, nah, I'm going to make beats. No, I don't really know about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I had Quincy, you know Quincy, Quincy. Uh, Diddy son. Oh yeah. I had him on my show, yeah. Shirley Temple, and he wanted to play baseball. I was like, "What would life be if you were playing baseball?" And he's like, "I'd be on the New York Yankees." I'm like, "Oh Dude. yeah, I should be. He probably would." <laughs> and he looks Spanish. He would be sure son too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you tapped in with him? With who? On the music tip, Quincy. Uh, nah, okay. I don't really. You know, ain't my thing. I got you. Yeah. Uh, well, what kind of kid were you? Did you get in trouble as a kid? Were I was you... a very troubled kid. Very, very trouble. Always in trouble. That's how I learned how to make beats. I'd be on punishment. Oh, shit. And then my punishment would start being, you can't make beats. Oh. My mom Damn. switched it up on me, you know, so. That's that was, yeah. smart parenting right there. Yeah, yeah. She tried. I didn't do too much. Right. Yeah. Damn. Did you ever get in trouble with the law when you were little? Oh. Uh, you got arrested? Yeah, I mean, everybody has, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, that's was part it? of being a kid. I hear you. Yeah. Man, well, you know, obviously... Well, first of all, you're from Southside Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I interviewed Omaretta. Okay. I just got to know your take on the Sorry Not Sorry song. Do you feel like... I don't really like the song. Oh, uh, really? I think it's a hard Yeah, like, song. I don't really like... Because she's saying, like, my hood, not Atlanta. She's saying, uh, like... okay. A lot of places in Atlanta, that's Atlanta, is not Atlanta. Like, you know? So it's like... Yeah. And truthfully, I don't too tough care about being from the city of Atlanta. I'm from Clayton County. Right. So it's a difference. Like, you know, a lot right. of people from the city of Atlanta can't stand up in Clayton County. Right. You feel me? So, or in some of the parts that she was dissing. You feel me? Like, I look at all that shit as a whole. Like, even College Park. College Park is still part of the city of Atlanta. Yeah. You know what Damn, I'm saying? Damn, that's all the shit she was naming. Yeah, that's the zip crazy. code is 30349. It's still oh, Fulton wow. County. It's still Atlanta. Yeah. My grandmama live over there right now. It's still Atlanta. She's really wrong. 
like very, very, very wrong. I'm surprised more people haven't said. I a mean, lot of a lot of people yeah. have. A lot of people came out. Alley Boy came out and said some. A lot of them did. Okay. Because Alley Boy, them from the East Side, like yeah. they're from Decatur. That is East Atlanta. That's still Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, cause she te- teamed up with Mulatto, and she's from what Clayton County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I don't crazy. think she teamed. She didn't team up with Mulatto. Oh, Mulatto hopped on the remix. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why though. You feel me? But I fuck with Mulatto though. Mulatto yeah. Hard. For yeah. sure. Man, well, 17, obviously, you know, you know the story. You were discovered by Waka Flocka. Like, just what was that like at age 17? Um, what was the energy? What was Southside I wasn't like? discovered by Waka. I, was I, mean, really, I mean, you teamed up with him. I was really discovered by Wu, his brother right here. Right. You feel me? That's who, I was, who the kid I was discovered by, really. And then uh, then I went on to start working with Waka, like, you know? Right. So that's kind of how that went. But that shit was like everything. That's what made me who I am. Right. You know, like she made it's played a the very at least eighty percent of my it played eighty percent of the role of me being south side of who I am. Right. Yeah. Like, I respect that. Yeah. A whole uh, lot. Um, just what are your fondest memories from the Brick Squad days? I mean, that that I feel like that was the time to be alive. Brick Squad was fun. Brick Squad was a lot of women, <laughs> a lot of fighting, a lot of partying, a lot of recording, a lot of working. Right. It's just you know, it's like uh, it's legendary. For sure, forever in history, Big Squad is going to be this thing. Like, you know, it was a lot of fun, though. A lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I loved it. Like, I loved it. I loved it a lot. Damn, you got an untold story or a memory you want to share? Uh, I mean. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. It's a lot. It's they so probably much, got some. Yeah, it's so much stuff. I don't know. I don't want it, you know, because everybody's a little crazy. I don't want nah. yeah. I'm done. Uh, man, well, yeah, obviously, you know, talk about the first song you made with Waka. It was, it ended up being. It was called uh, We On The Way. Right. He rode around for two weeks in the car writing the song. Oh my gosh. Yeah, writing the same song, doing the same I verse. We'll go to the club, he's still getting in the car, write the next two bars. He's doing this shit every, every damn day. He drove me crazy, but, you know, it ended up going up for him. Right. Yeah. Man, how, how did it feel? It just ended up. Ending up linking with Gucci Mane and all that. Gucci used to always say he really didn't know how to really like rap on my beats at first. Like, you know, he didn't really understand them. So he didn't really start rapping on my beats till Wu again. Wu made him rap on my beats. He did songs with Wu and then he went crazy on them. And then I ended up helping him and Walker do the album, The Ferrari Boys. Wow. Yeah. I made like majority, like 80% of the beats on there. Right. Yeah. How did that feel? So I like, was like an accomplishment. You know, yeah. I grew up watching Gucci. Like, you know, so it was right. a, for sure a very, very, very big accomplishment for me. At that time, it was a very big. People still play that now. Like, Marshmallow was playing the songs the other day saying them, that's his, them his favorite songs. No way. He loves those songs, you know? So it's a very, 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 it's just like now I hear and just, it's kind of funny to me. It's like, damn. <laughs> that was the beats I was making then. Like, you know? Yeah. So it's dope. I fuck with it, though. That's how, how did, I was going to ask how you link with Marshmallow because I, I seen you at EDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was my second time. That was my second time. This is my second time, my third time going to EDC. But um, I link with him. I link with Marshmallow from Mo. Mo Shalizzi. Like, I met His Mo manager, Shalizzi right? on... Walker went on tour with Steve Aoki, Borgor, and everybody. And I was on tour. I went on tour with him. I used to go with Walker when he go places. And I met Mo. Mo was Borgor's assistant. What? Yeah, Mo Shalizzi. He was Borgor's assistant. That's crazy. Yeah, and then he just... Him, they went crazy. Yeah. We all years later, it's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Do you have a soft do you have a love for EDM as well? Oh uh, or is it's it fun? Yeah. I wouldn't want to like make EDM and no shit like that. But I was gonna say if you're around them guys. After it- after yeah, but see like you know, like Marshmallow, he loved EDM, but he's really like, you know. He got like, the hip hop. Yeah, like a little ratchet up under the mask. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he like hip hop. Mo, they love hip hop. Like Mo's like a big three six mafia fan from like back in the sure. day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they love hip hop. I was gonna say I love Marshmallow's song with Roddy Rich. Oh yeah, but that's, that's what I'm see stuff like that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he loves the hip hop scene. So yeah. you know. Does that mean y'all got something? Oh yeah, we got plenty of stuff. Okay. Like plenty, plenty of stuff, plenty of stuff. I got some. I posted a snippet the other day with uh, with uh, Future Polo. I mean not. Future and Will and Thug, Free Thug too. Oh, but me and Marshmallow cool. made that beat. I got a couple of shits like that me and Marshmallow made together. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just asking for the Marshmallow fans. Oh, no. Nah, we got out. 
Me and Marshmallow have a lot of shit together. Like, that's my real friend. Pull yeah. up at the house, sit and make beats with him all day. It's my little brother. He don't got the, the hat on? Nah, I know the real <laughs> him. We got to know what he looks like. He get mad at us about the hat sometimes. They'll argue with us. Like, I'm not wearing that shit. Like, it's Yo, like, right, that's hilarious. Yeah. I love it. Man, well, 21, Um, you met, obviously, uh, Lex Luger. Or you guys established the 808 Mafia in 2017, right? Yeah, um, it not we didn't really establish it. You know, I kind of, I um, I gave Lex a chance to build something with me, and he said he was cool. He wanted to oh, wow. focus on being Lex Luger. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't get mad at it. I respected it, and I built my company. Right. You know. So yeah, I established 808 Mafia though. Right, man. Yeah. Well, just you know, the name in itself is you know named after Roland TR 808, the drum machine. Yeah. Like, how significant is that? Because if people know, that's like the first drum machine in hip hop, right? When yeah, well, uh, well, I just took the, not even a drum machine, just a drum. Because it was, it's a wave for us now. Yeah. You know, it's just called an 808 drum. So every drum that I would use is some kind of 808. that would be an 808 distorted. You know, so that's why we just called it 808. You know, 808 Mafia. Right. But even from the drum machines, from the MPC, that's where it come from, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Man, well, how did it feel to officially have that name? Because I feel like that re- that was just such a strong branding move on your part, you know? like Yeah, Waka well, said it in the song, actually. Okay. Waka well, said it in the song, like 808 Mafia, Sizzle, and Lex. When he said it in the studio, I was like, oh, it's over with. I'm about to go crazy. Like, I'm going to make this shit my company, like, and build this shit out. Like, really get producers. Yeah. I just built it out. She ended up being what I wanted. I always had a dream of that, though. Like, I always wanted, like, as time went on, as me being a producer, I always kind of wanted, like, like like the Disney World of production, I want the corner production and all. I'm still trying to do it like in every angle from every side. Like, you know, even if I can't make the beats, I still want to sign the kids that make different genres of music. That's fire. So, you know, that's always kind of been my dream to have a label full of celebrity producers or a pub company full of celebrity producers. Wow. Yeah. How difficult or easy was it to start your own company? Like, did you have someone showing you the ropes? Like, Yeah, I learned everything like from Mize. Like, I learned a lot of stuff. From who? Mize, Walker uh, Mom. Oh, like, I learned dead? a lot. Like, I learned yeah. a lot, lot from that. Like, you know? Yeah. I learned a lot from those situations. So, I was just, I was young, listening, always listening, learning, listening, listening, and learning. I just, you know, carried it on and kept moving with it. All of it. Was there a number one piece of advice she gave you that resonates to this day, maybe? Auntie just want money. Nah. <laughs> that's the only advice for you. You got to get that money. Yo, that's, that's a good it. one. Yeah. I get that money. That's it, man. Um, was TM88 part of the original 808 Mafia? Yeah, TM, actually me and TM was the original 808 Mafia. Okay. That's what 808 Mafia is, me and TM88. Right. Know? A lot of people say Lex is not Lex, it's me and TM. Got you. Yeah. How were those early days? I've interviewed TM, he's super cool. TM always been my big, I, I met TM before, before a lot of this shit. Like I met TM really before I met Walker for real. Oh, wow. Like honestly, like you know, so yeah. TM was always like a, a, a guy from where we was from that made beats. See, I always thought he was better than everybody with the beats. Nah. Like, you know, like I'd ask some little shit here, come around here, just kind of just be like, yeah, just do this. I was on some little brother shit, like, you know? Yeah. But I end up going with Walker and them and end up learning certain shit and learning stuff where I took off before everybody. Right. Because I started learning the business. I started getting placements. I started getting money. And then actually my brother Dunk, God bless his soul, Slim Dunk and Slim Dunk had called me one day because he, he kept, um they kept TM, TM. I'm like, man, I ain't fucking with him. He, he ain't used to fuck with me, like. No like way. that. Dunk called me one day and was like, nah, you fucking with him. He's like, I'm <laughs> finna bring him to the house. And he brought him over there every since then, Tim. And, you know, Tim always been like a big brother to me, though, you know? So, yeah. but Dunk really did this with us and was like, nah, bro, y'all a group. This shit gonna be hard. Like, you know? Right. So, Dunk played a big role in Edway Mafia, too. He played a very, very big role. For sure. Yeah. Do you remember how much your first beat was that you sold? $750. That's pretty good. Yeah. It was kind of cool. $750. <laughs> I'm like, how much are they now? <laughs> uh, like a hundred thousand. Damn. Yeah. Add some zeros. A <laughs> hundred each one. That's what I want. That's crazy. Yeah, some people want fifty. Obviously, you have the homie discount. Yeah, homie discount is just a swap. Oh, okay. <laughs> for my brothers, like, but my brother's verses be two hundred thousand. Uh, right. Future verse probably three four hundred thousand right now. That's crazy. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. swap. I have to swap two beats for a verse or something like that. Yo. Yeah. That's a nice swap, though. No, it's an excellent swap. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think you also met Metro when he was 14. Yeah, 14, 15, some shit like That's that. That's wild. Metro, my boy. Yeah. It's my real boy. It's my dog. It's my boy. Real, real dog. It's my boy. How, like, were y'all just in Atlanta? No, nah, he, he used to DM me all the time. Like, oh. 
Like he used to always DM right. me. DM me, DM me, DM me. He just wouldn't let up, you know? He was always like a little player though, like just cool, like cool kid. Beats was hard, like, you know, just trying to get in the game. Right. Then he started coming to Atlanta, like when he was 16 or some shit like that. And I ended up really, really meeting him and stuff. Right. We've been rocking ever since. He came back from college and been my little brother every like it's over with. That's my brother, my real, real brother. How's it feel to be able to just celebrate your guys' successes at this point? Cause it's my real friend, like my everyday yeah. call. Like I I go to the studio with him for six months straight and won't touch one beat or do nothing. I just sit in there and just chill with him, go to the house with him all day. Like he really don't like me to leave his side. <laughs> yeah, like, we really I heard like that. real friends. Like, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's uh, crazy. It's a blessing though to have a real friend that really came up with me doing this. Right. You know? It's yeah. a blessing. Is still Icy Boys a thing or y'all? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a thing. I, that's our thing. You know, that's our little thing, the Icy Boys. Yeah. That's our thing. We the Icy's producers out. Facts. Yeah, like so. That's our thing. I'm like, how much is your 808 Mafia chain, Southside? Uh, half a million. Half a million? <laughs> yeah. Half that's a on million. Eliante, shout out Eliante. Crazy. Yeah. And that's on a light day. I heard you say you y'all usually rock million dollars of jewelry worth of jewelry. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I could leave and go put on a whole other million dollar set up right now if I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I think he got some jewelry in his bag. Where your bag at? Yo. Yeah, he probably got like four or five chains in his bag just sitting there right now. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> um, I think I saw, yeah, they had remade the beat on Wild Boy with Machine Gun Kelly and Metro was the first one to call you. Yeah, they remade 848. Okay. From Jim Jones. It was a song he had in New York with, right. Waka, with Waka on it also. That was going crazy. They just literally remade the beat and then put Waka on the other song. So right. Miss Deb called a musicologist and uh, the musicologist gave me full control of all of the song. So I still gave him 5% of the beat. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, but. Damn. Because I feel like that should be happening in the music industry. People would be it saying does happen. they still... I still do. I do it to this day. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. I did it with some... I did it with uh, DDG. Oh, okay. DDG got a song with Blueface. They remade Too Comfortable. That's Future. It's the same, oh, okay. it's the same exact beat. They remade it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so same thing. Did they hit you beforehand or was it was like an after? No, they oh. put it out first, but okay. he's epic also. So it wasn't oh, even a okay. difficult situation. It's just like, you're right. Yeah. Like, here you go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Who did I have on here that was saying how like, I don't know. They were talking about real musicians making shit from scratch as opposed to sampling. But Wait. even the loop, even the loop makers, these kids is putting their names on it. Let's clear this up. <laughs> they're not even making the loops. They're forming people in the room that's real musicians and they're giving them work for hires. They're paying them about an hour. So it might cost you $200 an hour to play a dude that play the guitar or the drums. And then you loop it into a Pro Tools and you bring it to me and I like you made it and collect publishing off of it. So the people that say that they're real loop makers, they're not even making the loops. The musicians, oh, wow. they work for hiring them and paying them. Got you. You know, so they're not yeah. even making the loops. You know? Okay, for sure. Yeah. I got you. Um, man, I saw you guys also, you also say you guys are competitive. You and the whole 808 Mafia. Yeah. We oh. go for, you know, I always tell my boys, everybody go for number one. Yeah. We'll fill up one, two, and three. And we run it. We run music, like, you know? Yeah. So, and I, I look at shit like, you know, I always tell them, like, man, I don't, you know, bro, you ain't never, I never had a number one record, like a number one uh, Hot 100 record, like, you know? You haven't? I've never had a number one. Top 10, number two, number three, number four. But Damn. I always tell people, like, I've been probably uh, the number two producer in the world for the last 12 years. Right. I'm richer than every number one that then came through. Right. Because I've been in this spot so long, just, you know? So I don't really look at shit like that. I'd be happy if it's one of my friends that went number one. I feel like I went number one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't look at shit like that. But I just try to make them compete. So they won't think. You know, it's it's... Take it for granted. Yeah. We still compete and try to outdo me still. Yeah. You know? So. Who's the number one producer? Um, <laughs> I feel like Metro is like the best producer in the world. That's love. Yeah, like, I ain't gonna lie. Because of how he do shit, not even just him making beats, how he really put together an album. Mm -hmm. Like a very, like an executive producer. He puts an album together. Right. You know, so right now, in this day of time, I feel like Metro is the greatest producer in the world. Wow. Yeah. That's a statement. Yeah. But as far as the culture, Nobody's fucking with me. <laughs> yeah. Talk your shit then. Yeah. Uh, 2011, we got to talk about the Watch the Throne mo moment. Uh, Kanye, Jay-Z, illest motherfucker alive. What What did that do for your career? Because, you know, obviously. Um, it, it was it was a crazy thing. I really couldn't even believe I was, you know. And then, like, how Kanye did the song, he put, like, a three-minute pause in the beginning of the song. Like, <laughs> but it still went crazy. Like, this is how hard it was. So. 
I couldn't even believe it. Like, you know, I was just glad to be a part of it. At that time, I was super, super glad. Yeah. Yeah, like, it helped me tremendously. Did things change after that song came out? Um, yeah, thing, I mean, things was already changing before the song came out, you know? Right. So it was, without the song, I was still was going to be who I was, you know, right. regardless. But yeah, it did. That's definitely something to have up under my belt. And I was on the album, you know? Yeah. For sure, that's something to have up That's under legendary. My belt. Yeah. Did you get to watch the Kanye documentary? Oh, uh, yeah, I watched it. What'd it, you think? Uh, I'm, I love Kanye. I'm a big Kanye fan. Yeah. Even when they're trying to say Kanye crazy and all the other shit, I'd be like, he ain't crazy. Right. Just speaking his mind. Yeah. Yeah. There's no limit to that. You know? So, nah, I love the Kanye documentary. I think it's dope. I got some of, like, kind of like the same shit they're putting together right now from, they've been oh, filming since like 2012, 2013 to me. Yeah. Yeah, like 10 years ago. Crazy. It's so, like now, you know? So, same kind of thing. For sure. Because I was just going to say from a producer standpoint, seeing him struggle to be taken seriously as a producer, did you ever experience that struggle? Where well, you he didn't really struggle to be taken serious as a producer. He was excellent as a producer. They took him seriously. I mean, as a rapper, my bad. As an artist, yeah, he my struggled. Bad rapper. Yeah. He, he, they tried to make him stay a producer because he was so good right, at it. Right, right, right. He struggled to be an artist, and I, that made me respect him 100% more. He didn't take no for an answer no matter what. Right. You know, he even started recording on other people's budgets because they stopped his budget. Yeah. I got too much respect for him, like, you yeah. know? That's one of my idols, for sure. Respect. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, I feel like I interview a lot of producers that actually rap now. Yeah, I rap too. Okay, mm -hmm. I was going to say. Yeah, same difference. Huh? Yeah. You feel the same passion for rapping then? Yeah, I, I I just really like to rap for my, like, you know, for my friends and shit. Like, I don't, if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. Yeah. If it don't, I'm cool, I'm content. I got you. You know? <laughs> um, You were, uh, well, 2013, you produced Millions, uh, lead single off Pusha T's Wrath of I forgot King. about that. You got a lot of shit. Shit. I forgot about this. All right. That what was it? millions on the floor. Me, hey. Millions on the floor. I forgot about that. Him and what? Rick Ross was on it or something like that? Um, no? Who was on it? I'm not sure. Let me look it up. But how how did you tap in with Push? And how was that? A, that was what, Yeah, Rick remember, Ross is I don't even it. remember how he got the beat, honestly. I don't even no remember. No way. I don't even remember. I just remember I got a placement. Like, I don't know how I got it. I forgot. That's, That's crazy. crazy. I forgot about that song. That's crazy. That's, That's crazy. Maybe they just remember that. That's crazy. Right. The song actually sparked controversy when Rico Beats was asked to modify your instrumental for the final version. And you weren't notified of the changes. And y'all went back and forth on that? I went back and forth. I did. On Twitter? Did y'all? Well, who? What's his name? Rico Beats? You don't even remember? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. If I did my song. I'm sorry, Rico. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> y'all remember? Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> I don't like how we is with beef and shit. Like... Oh, no, it wasn't beef, but you know, it was just soft. Yeah, but like, if I'm going back and forth, it's beef. Like, you know oh, what I'm okay. saying? So it's like, I don't just, I, I just, that's different for me. I don't play like air, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it was, it couldn't have been no real, you know? I hear you. I don't even remember. I got yeah. you. Um, you, that same year you did Tap Out by Birdman? No, nah, I didn't make that. I don't know why they say that. You I, and TM didn't make that? Them we did not make Tap Out. What? Yeah, we never made Tap Out. I don't know why they always say that. We didn't make Tap Out. That's so weird. Yeah, we didn't make that. We did you do anything with Birdman? Um, in the rich game, I think I did. Um, some I, I, I was around when Thug and was around. I made Danny Glover from Thug, so right. I mean, I was around during that time, like you know, I did. I made some, I did make some with Birdman. I think with Rich Homie Kwam and Birdman. I made so many records, I just don't, you know. No, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, we definitely want to talk about Danny Glover. Um, that was co produced with TM88. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was. Because that was one of Thug's, like, earliest songs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how I made it, TM ended up fucking with the beat later on. You feel me? Oh, okay. When we first in it, uh, initially making it, initially made it, like, I, it was just me, my boy Trey Pound was there, Thug, Metro, Metro and uh, Thug was in there working. And I looked at the window, I was in there making the beat, I looked at the window, Thug was just sitting in the window in, this, like, the studio shit, like, just in the door, I just seen him in the door, just sitting there rapping. <laughs> So I'm like, hey, so you had to hit a button to let him in. I'm like, y'all let him in. He came in. He just, he like, hey, what, what, you, what you doing with that? And I was like, you can have it. He's like, bounce it right now. Bring it bring it across the thing. So I bounced it. He came back in like 30 minutes. I was like, what? bro, come, I want you to come hear this shit. Like, I walked in the room. Metro face was looking crazy. Like, <laughs> Metro was looking like, bro, this it. You know, he played it for me. I was like, damn, this shit crazy. Yeah, and then TM ended up fucking with the beat and modified that whole swag, like, after that. Like, you know? Yeah. So that's how that went. How did it feel to see the reaction after it blew up? Like 
that was an that was another swag in hip hop. That type of beat, like you yeah. know, that 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 was the start of the the, the, uh, the distortion eight hundred eight that I used, like yeah, just how it was. Like that was just a whole other start of a whole other swag in hip hop. You know, wow, yeah. So I'm on it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, 2014 features mixtape monster. Um, you did a quarter of that production. 2000, yeah. How was that? A quarter. I did more than a quarter. How, how, many, much? how many records I did on there? I'm not a sure. Monster. I did a lot of monster. I did damn near. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, how was that? Moment? Me and Metro really did like damn near all of that shit for real. Like. Okay. Yeah, monster. We did a lot, a lot, a lot of monster. Yeah. But it was a very fun. That's when me and Metro was just making beats every day, chilling. That was a very fun time. When they actually shot the monster video, Metro was so mad at me. Why? He kept calling me. He like, man, Future wants you to get in the video with me, bro. Like, just come up and get in the video. And I used to like to get in videos and shit. I used to be like, bro, I ain't getting no video. I Why? Just, I just, it, it wasn't my thing back then. Like, okay. you know, I just like to make beats, do my thing, keep moving. Like, you know, it wasn't right. my thing back then. You know, so Future used to always say that. Like, even when we shot the video, the whole day, yeah, I was gonna... he was so surprised. Like, he just didn't even, because he done asked me to be in Fuck Up Some Commas. I pulled up to the Fuck Up Some Commas video shoot. But and didn't. you wouldn't get in the shot? Yeah. I didn't feel like I had it together. Like, you know, like. Like, you know, I was, I'm one of them people, like, I'm not going to fake it till I make it. I just, like, I'm going to wait till I make it till I'm able to show myself the way I want to show myself. You know? Respect that. Yeah, so it was cool. Like, Future was able to look how he was supposed to look. I wasn't, I didn't have the funds. I didn't have certain things to do the things I wanted to, you know? Wow. So I was like, I didn't stress about it. It just, yeah. I wasn't ready. So what was the moment you were ready? Uh, later on. Just, you know, <laughs> later on. When Dirty Spray 2 came out. I was going to ask that next. Yeah, like, by the time Dirty Spray 2 came out, like, 56 Nights and all that started coming out, I was right. ready. Yeah, I was ready. Because Dirty Spray 2, like, that. Dirty Spray 2, I was over ready. We was around, yeah. around Rolls Royces, all that shit already. Man. Then these, I was out here in L.A. When Dirty Spray 2 came out. Crazy. He actually had a show at the Roxy. At the Roxy? You know the Roxy off Sunset? Yeah, I was going to say. That he had posted the shit. It was now, like, it's yeah. a free show. Like, you know? Oh, okay. I stayed off a street called Hilldale right off of Sunset. So I walked down to the edge of the street because I heard the helicopters and shit. It was so many sheriffs out there and shit because it was like 6,000 kids in the street. Right. Trying to wait in line and get inside the show. I was like, damn. I'm like, this shit is crazy. I'm like, off. Oh. So I walked down the street. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm going to walk down the street. Let me just... Let me see what's going on. I walked in the street, they started tripping. Like, I had to run back to the house. I'm like, this yeah. shit's crazy. Like, you feel me? So, that shit showed me some shit. Like, that's like some 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 classic shit. Like, you know? Yeah. It show, I had to, I got to see that shit firsthand. Like, like I was a fan damn near. Yeah. Walked down, I'm like, damn, I know who I am too. Like, oh, yeah. let me go back up here. I'm tripping. Like, you yeah. know? But that shit was crazy. That's a beautiful moment, though. Yeah, it was a very, very beautiful moment. It was crazy. You didn't say for the show or you did? I, I, I actually, I have... Uh, I only been to one show with Future. I've never been to none of his shows, ever. Not one. Like I've been on stage with Metro DJ, and we've brought him out. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I we did. We did a show with him in Las Vegas, like a festival shit. Like, but I've never actually like been to like none of his tour shows. I never. I don't go to. I don't really do shit like that. Yeah. I just now started doing that. Like going to the EDCs, the festivals. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? I have fun and all this. That's why I go now. Like, yeah. I have a lot of fun. But I like to go like a fan. Yeah. I respect that. I like to go and walk around, go watch people perform and shit. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite set from EDC? I don't really, you know, <laughs> I don't know the shit. Okay. Like, you know what I'm I saying? I used to so, rave, so that's why I asked. Yeah, I don't be knowing the people like that. Like, if Marshmallow would have been there, he would have been telling me, this is so-and-so. Yeah. Like, you know? So, but he wasn't there, so. But yeah. I just, all that shit be sounding the same to me. Yeah. And I was on shrooms. I was fucked up. <laughs> Super fucked up at EDC. I love it. They gave me like some, uh, like some glass glasses. Like, oh shit, what is that? They was like broken up glass while I was on the shroom. So you know how all that shit looked. Oh, okay, okay. That shit looked it crazy with the Yo. music playing. Like it was just crazy. Yeah. yeah. Do you make beats on shrooms too? I try. Okay. It's just too much. Like, is it? Yeah, it's like the colors. Like it's just okay. after a while, it's just I just kind of like ah, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I try. Damn. I try. I think after I found out ASAP Rocky and Skepta made their song on acid, I was like, just made it 10 times better. Yeah, that's Rocky swag. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. LSD, I, right. I done tried to make me song acid too. Same shit. Like, yeah. you know? I went, the first time I ever went to EDC, I was on acid. Actually, I wasn't on Shroom. <laughs> yeah. I love acid. Yeah, I, I had a bad trip out there. Oh, acid, no, though. that's the word. But it wasn't EDC, though. Okay. It wasn't EDC. What's the movie called with the people? Um, Us. 
Oh my god! Where the people got the the shit on as they self or some shit like that, That's, and they come in the kitchen. I just it creeps me out. But I don't know why this. I end up watching this off acid, like you know. What I'm no, saying? you did not. That creepy ass movie she fucked me up for like two days. I was fucked up sitting. Oh in my, room, my god! Room closed, rocking in the room two days. Yeah. Like missing, fucked up, like fucked up. That's the last time I did acid. Yo, I was fucked up for like two days. That's hilarious. Yeah, one of the, one of the, one of my previous assistants had to come in and was like, "Yo, bro, like." Yeah. I ain't trying to invade your privacy, but you got stuff to do. Like, you got to get up. You got to get out these rooms, bro. Like, I was fucked up. Like, fucked up. Damn. Yeah. I feel but like... I had a ball at EDC. <laughs> you feel me? The... Right. It was that movie. That's crazy. Yeah, it was that movie. Do you watch scary movies anymore? <laughs> you know why I don't watch scary movies? Because I'm a producer. I listen to music. So oh, okay. Once the music started playing, I just kind of just like, somebody's going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, once it's, you, I'm telling you this right now, yeah. and now when you watch scary music, you're I like, know. damn, Southside said that. I wish you would've never told me. Right. But it's like, as soon as I hear the music, I just be like, something finna happen. Right. So it's like, it's not really a build up. It's not scary to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Cause after you come out of that bad trip, you're like, damn, I really need to have the mental capacity to be able to she do this. Fuck my mind up. I was yeah. just like, people living under the ground. I'm just really yeah. sad thinking, like, what the fuck is this really going on? Yeah. Like, you know? Oh, fuck me up. That's hilarious. Man, you mentioned uh, not going to shows or not, yeah, being on, like, even fuck up the, some commas when he was performing that shit. You never popped out when he was in your area or nearby or like, because that's such a huge song, biggest song on Dirty Sprite too. Spent two week, 20 weeks on the Hot 100, went gold. Yeah, I, don't, mm -mm. I never, ever, ever, like, nah, I never did. Mm -mm. I never went to none of the shows. I remember being on the airplane. And I remember on the airplane, and the plane landed. My mama called me and was like, uh, "Seems like you ain't just see the, the Verizon commercial Jamie Foxx did <laughs> for the for the for the for the finals with LeBron and them." And I was like, and "I'm like, nah, what they do?" She was like, "She was like they redid fuck up some commas." She like, "Go look at it." Like, so I went and watched the shit. In my mind, light bulb. I'm like, I ain't signed nothing saying this was cool. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, and I got a pretty good check off of that. That's crazy. Yeah, for like 30, 30 seconds or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Um, I saw, yeah, commas, you and DJ Spins made that, right? Spins, my boy. We made it on October 29th. Monster came out. It actually came out on um on Monster. Yeah, at first. Commas originally. did on Halloween, yeah. yeah. You feel me? So and then they it went to the it went to the album. I think it did. Something like that. That's album. not common, right? For someone to fuck up. Um, no, nah, that's how future does. Like they call me and him fourth quarter. Like, that's just what he do. Like, he'll call me at the very, very, very end of the album. Like, the end, end. Like, the last day to turn it in, I pull up, we'll just go crazy. Oh, wow. He'll end up making a hit. Like, you know? Yeah. I think Esco had came in there when he made it. Esco came in and was like, this is all we needed. Wow. That's it. He like, that's the one. And that shit really, really went crazy. Yeah. Two days later, it was a hit. Like, some crazy, <gasps> crazy shit in my life. You could not go to the club without hearing that shit. Still to this day. Right. Yeah, still to this day. Still to this day. Crazy. Still to this day. You be clubbing? You be out in the club? Club, Unless clubs. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm always I'm to all right now. Went to the club Yo, where in LA? I went to Highlight Room. Oh, okay. Yeah, the R&B Wednesdays. Oh, okay. It's my thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I went to pop that. It was me, Polo G, Lil TJ, G. Oh, okay. We all went out together last night. I didn't even, I, I feel like they don't like to pop out. Who? Polo G and TJ. TJ like to pop out. Polo, oh, okay. nah. Yeah. Polo, you know, Polo's kind of like, uh, Polo just, just Polo. Yeah. Herb is in the mix. Herb is, I, was I like, love Herb. I love Herb. Herb. One of my favorite rappers. Herb's one of my best friends. I got 958 tied in my face. That's 150 plus 808. Wow. Yeah. That's our thing, 958. Man. Yeah. We definitely got, I remember interviewing him about Swervo because that shit was just like, it was just so dope hearing him talk about how they you. Call, they call us Swerve and Curve. Yeah. I'm Curve, he Swerve. That's hilarious. That's what they call us. It's funny as a motherfucker. <laughs> when you find out the true meanings of that, you're going to laugh. But I was going to say, can you explain? Nah, I never will. Somebody will explain one day. Damn. Yeah, I'm not going to explain it. All right. It's funny, though. It's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> I'm going to ask them because they, they know. know. They know, but they won't explain it. Nah. Somebody, somebody will explain it one day. Near in the future, later on, five, six years and now. I'm going to ask her when I see him. And you might really explain it. Yeah, right. I hope he don't explain it. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Man, yeah. well, yeah, I remember interviewing him and him just telling me, like, yo, Southside really pushed me. Like, pushed me. Like, yeah, I walk in the studio and be like, yeah, that shit all right. Yeah. 
I come back, you got some shit that's crazy. Like, oh, okay. You know? But the shit I say is all right would be epic. It'd be great shit. I just do that to him just to. It's my little brother. Like, he know he nice. Like, you know? Yeah. I've been telling him since he was 16. Like, bro, you remind me like a Jay-Z. Like, the way you put your words wow. together. Wow. Yeah. What'd he say to that? Yeah, you know, he was so wild. He just always, you know, he was. When I first met Herb, none of them would talk to me. Like, none of them. I walked in the studio to set up the session. None of them would say a word well, to why? me. Why? I had to go show them some things. I'm not going to say what. I had okay. to go show them a few things. <laughs> After I showed them a few things, they was just like, them have been my little brothers ever since. Damn. Yeah. What was that like releasing that project? Because talk about executive produce. Like, you got to really showcase you. That was just like, that was fun. That was like, okay. that's my brother. Like, okay, my okay. real brother can, right now, he can, yesterday, <laughs> takes my cars. I take his cars for two months. Like, <laughs> talks to my mom more than I talk to my mom. Like, that's my real little brother. Like, you know, my kids, my son, them. My son probably called Herb every day, my oldest Aww. son. Like, you know? Like, even your son. I just seen his son and gave his son $10,000 for his birthday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, they, they was called. They, this grandma and them called. Like, man, get all this money. Like, you know his uncle gave him all that damn money. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, that's my real family. Like, I love Herb. Herb really one of us. Can't that's, have anything I got my last. That's beautiful. Yeah. He's funny as hell, too, so I'm sure y'all have. He's a, well, together, us. Yeah. <laughs> Drunk, up, moving, just, you would probably be like, man, they, they damn crazy. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. He's hilarious. Right. Yeah. You ever spend time in Chicago? You went out? What? Oh, I, yeah. I love Chicago. It's like my right. third home. Oh, okay. Third home. Atlanta first, Miami second, okay. Chicago third, my homes. New York fourth. I love New York, too. Summertime, yeah. New York. Summertime, because it's too cold? Yeah. <laughs> Chicago cold, too. Yeah. That's why they third and fourth. Yeah. <laughs> Feel me? Right. You ever? Would you ever move to L.A.? I lived here. I, oh, lived, okay. I lived here. I, I came out here like seven when Dirty Spray 2 came out, like six years yeah. ago. I was living here. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, so I lived here. I, it took its courses off. Right. Did my time here. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Well, we got to talk about 56 Nights real quick. Um, You produced nine out of ten songs. You made all the beats in one night? Yeah, pretty much. For my homie Slug, he's sitting out there right now. Okay. Yeah, he's outside. I did pretty much in one night. And then um, when Esco came in with... uh. He had played March Madness for me. And one of my producers, Tarantino, he had made the beat. And he was like, I don't know if I'm going to put it on there, bro, because they already had put it out on SoundCloud. Oh, what? Yeah, they already had put it up. And I was like, bro, he still, he's with me. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know? Yeah. Put that shit on there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean? That ended up being like one of the most iconic songs ever. Still. Still to this day. Right. Like, you know, so. I'm, I'm glad to play a part in that. Right. A, a major role, nine out of yeah. ten. 90%. Right. Yeah, for how, sure. How to feel just, you know, because I was named after Esco being locked up for 50 I go, I was, I was kind of, I never even knew they was doing that shit like that. Wow. Like, you know? So it was like, I went to South by South, Southwest with my son. I went and got my son, Carmelo. I went to South by Southwest and I took him to meet Future and he thought Future was 2 chains. It was so funny. Yo! It was so fucking That's funny. That's hilarious. He was a kid though. Like he was a ba like he was like four or five years <laughs> old. Maybe six. He was like a real kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's so, hilarious. But Future, then, you know, Future laughing and just is like, oh, it's cool. Like, who this is a shoot? Now he definitely knows what's going on. <laughs> He's 13 now, so it's yeah. different. But I had went, like, um, me and Casino was sitting there talking. When I walked in, everybody was just smiling, just looking at me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, the fuck all them keep smiling and shit for? I'm like, what the fuck is y'all keep? Everybody cheesing and grinning and grinning. And Casino's like, you ready? I'm like, ready for what? I'm like, what the fuck is y'all talking about? I'm like, what, 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 what we ready for? Like, he like, bro, this is about to be the hardest shit he ever dropped, bro. Like, Damn. this shit about to be legendary, bro. Him and Esco about to drop this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I went and sat in the room and sat in there and talked to Future. Future was talking to me and just like, man, Lil Metro about to make millions. Wow. And you know, somebody say that shit to you at first, you just kind of be like, you're like, ah, yeah, hey. I hear you. Like, you feel what I'm saying? But. He was right, shit. Yo. You know what I'm saying? The impact that shit had was just crazy. It, right. led up, it led up. Those three tapes, Monster, Beach Mode, and 56 Nights, is like, uh, 50, it's like a DS2. Yeah. It was like the whole setup for DS2 to go crazy and do right. what it did, you know? So it's like, I'm honored to be a part of that. Honor, right. honor, honor, honor. Very, very honor. And I appreciate Future a whole lot. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Man, well, speaking of Future, Drake and Future, what a time to be alive. You did four songs on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, big. That's a big yeah, what's, what's, what did I make? I made a digital dash. Live from the gutter. I'm the plug. Jersey. Yeah, Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Damn, I forgot about those. Right. 
Yeah, that's fire. I made Digital Dash on Travis Tour Bus when him and Thug was on what? tour. What? Yeah, in the days before Rodeo. That's crazy. Yeah, me and Metro. Metro was a DJ on that tour. Right. So we was all on tour with Travis. We was all on the bus with Travis just chilling and shit. We was in uh going to Phoenix. That's crazy. We made the beat on the studio bus on the speakers. Damn. Yeah, yeah that shit was crazy. Like crazy. That's wild. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Um, how was it working with Drake on that project? Did you Drake came to Atlanta? Like I remember us going to um what's the studio that's far as fuck woo? The um Fuck the shit that's up um Tree Sound. I think it's called Tree Sound and some shit like that. It's a studio called Tree Sound and some shit like that. It's far as it's got like a little tree house inside the studio. It's far as far as fuck. But I remember we went in there, we walked in, like Metro, Esco, and Drake, they was in there doing all the, the dances and shit. Remember they was doing all the the dances they had and all that shit. I ain't no really no dancer and shit, so <laughs> Metro was down there with Drake the whole time. Yeah. Like all the free bands is upstairs. Okay. Yeah, um, I was just upstairs with the free bands, like more of my thing, you know? Yeah. So I sat up there with them and shit, you know? It was like, that shit was fun. But Drake really was tapped in, like fucking with the hood, like, you know? Yeah. Fucking with the culture of Atlanta, so. Right. That shit was fire. I fuck with it. It was a very, it was a fire experience. And they had the whole building booked out. So we was in other rooms making beats. Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. Will there ever be a part two to this project? Uh, I'm hearing it is, so I don't know. But uh, I hope it is. I hope it would. I would love to hear that. Yeah. I would really they just went number one. TM, you know, TM made it and two dope made too sexy. Oh shit. Yeah, That's TM fire. made that. So, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I pray it's gonna be a part two to that. Wow. Yeah, that'd be dope. To finish it off, you know? Yeah. That'd be fire. For sure. How did uh highlights for Kanye come about? Um, damn, highlights. You know, I actually was at Kanye House for like a month. Oh shoot. The shit in Calabasas or whatever. I was there for like a month. I had Trav took me over there. Okay. Travis Scott took me over wow. there. He had called Travis. He was like, man, I need your help on my album. And I was with Trav every day. And Trav was like, man, he was like, all right, Southside with me. And he was like, I love Southside. Like, bring him over. Like, I you know. I love it. I came over one day. Trav was sitting there with the Soupies playing the songs. I went back the next day and they played a song for me. I think Common was in there. Common was in there. Somebody else was in there too. I think uh, his old his engineer Noah was there. There's a couple people there. Yeah. And uh, everybody in the room was like, they love the song. It's like, we love the song, we love the song. I was like, I was like, I don't really like it. To Kanye, you know? Not yeah. highlights. Just okay. The, uh, oh, okay. A song from the album, like, you know? Yeah. I was like, I don't really, really like it. So I thought I had fucked up, but it's like, I can't really. I'm not a bite my tongue. So it's like, if I fucked up, it's cool. I just go the next route, you know? Yeah. The next day, the engineer called me and was like, man, yeah, he wants you to start coming around. He was like, he ain't had nobody really telling me he don't like a song in a, he don't like a, song in a long time. Like, he respects your honesty. Like, you know what wow. I'm saying? So yeah. I started pulling up every day, just going over. I really remade, I touched every beat on that album. Even, even Father Stretched My Hands. No way. Metro just sounded better. But I touched literally every beat on that album and I only, I only end up getting highlights. It's crazy. Like, it's the craziest shit ever. Like, literally every song I touched it because he's seen how quick I make beats. Yeah. But I was sitting over there, just let me go in this little this little pool house studio shit. And I just sit there and make beats. He'll come in. He's like, damn, you just made that shit that fast. I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. So when we start going through the songs, he'll give me a song. I'll do it in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And be like, hey, I finished it. So he'll give me like, he just gave me like nine of them. He was like, hey, just do all of them real quick. Just try to touch everything. Yeah. You know, so I touched everything really. But I only, that was the only one I really did. I like. That's wild. Yeah. Did you learn anything from working with Kanye? He a genius. Right. He's really, that's why I say I respected me at real life genius. He made me sit down and watch the movie Revenant. Really? Yeah, you ever seen Revenant? I don't think so. Maybe. Let me look it up. That sounds familiar. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. When he played like in the Western time. Okay. I think I've seen it. Yeah. I think he won like an award off of it. Okay. When he got inside of the horse, he cut the horse open and got inside of it to stay alive. And oh nice. my God. That, I watched I the whole movie with him and never realized that he didn't say one word the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> and won the award from that. That's how smart he is. He's like, bro, he didn't say one word. I was like, damn. Thought about it. Went back and watched him. Like, he didn't say one word. He didn't say one word the whole movie. That's wild. She I got to go back and watch yeah, it. Yeah, she was fire. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Man, uh, 2017, Tunnel Vision, Kodak Black. Fire. Legendary song. Le probably the best. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah. Yeah. How did that happen? How was that moment? It has uh, I don't really know Kodak like that, you know? Oh, okay. Like, you know, we had all the differences and shit, so. Okay. But Metro did that. Like, you oh, know what I'm okay. saying? I just made the beat with Metro. 
Okay. Very legendary song though. Sold and did a lot. Did good. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Um, 2018. Um, he included this song. I think you called out Tory Lanez after a Travis Scott incident. What was that? Oh. Uh, about. I don't know. Tory cool now. I just yeah. don't like Trav, my boy. I feel like, you know, how Trav is, Trav is just like artistic. Right. Virginia artistic. So it's like, I don't really like when people try to fuck with him and do shit like that. That's really my boy. It's yeah. my little brother. So it's like, you know, that was more on some shit like you think you like, don't try to come over. Don't like, we with him every day. You're going to run into us too. You understand right. what I'm saying? So let it go and let that shit rock. Right. You feel me? But Tory cool now. And cool. I got you. I mean, speaking of, you know, obviously the Astro World tragedy. Um, how did you feel about well, that? I'm not speaking on that. Oh, okay. No, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. I mean, on a positive note, then yeah, we gotta yeah, talk. I just don't even want to, you know, yeah. that's tough. I don't even want to speak on that. No, you're good. Yeah, thank you. Um, but definitely want to talk about Hold That Heat. That's your new record, just dropped, featuring Travis Scott. Um, this is actually his first like song since all that. Yeah. I mean, that must be special for you. It's very, very, very special because he's really a good person. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, that's my real friend, and that's it tore me. It tore a part of me up to watch him go through all of that shit, honestly. Like, you know, so I am very, very thankful that he trusted me and gave me the judgment to put out the first song since all of that stuff happened. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because he really, really loves his fans. He really, really loves shows. Like, he loves his fans. Like, he would try to get down there and fight the security for his fans. Like, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, people graduate from things. I'm talking about when he was doing 2,500 people venues like he could do stuff like that but you're mm -hmm. talking about a hundred million dollar artist now he can't get down there and try to fight a security guard right it's a lawsuit for him like right. you know so i just you know i'm very very thankful my brother gave me a real 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 chance yeah you know to show people that he's a great person because he is he's yeah. a very great person that's beautiful yeah and what does that mean to share that moment with hold that he how did that song come about was that some shit i really made the beat like five years ago honestly like some crazy shit like you know how do you even remember you have that beat? I remember making it, but I hadn't. I never heard him do a cadence or nothing to it. So okay, I pulled up and played my new a single I'm going to put out in a couple months on Future Call Yellow Tape. And he went so crazy about the single. He just like this was the game need right now. Like just going crazy, like you know. Yeah. So my homie Los that be with him every day. Lose was like, man, play the shit you just did. Like, play the shit you did on Sizzle shit. Because Trav had texted me and was like, hey, bro, I did some shit. Like, yo, shit. Like, some old shit you had did, but I, oh, okay. I did, rapped on it now. So, yeah. Like, he played that shit for me. I was like, man, this shit crazy. Yeah. My homie Lose was like, man, you need to get Southside that song. <laughs> he like, who better than Southside to put that song out? Like, yeah. Southside, wow. Southside always in some shit. Like, you know? He don't, I, I never asked nobody for nothing. Like, I just, I don't even call him. Like, yo, bro, I need this. Like, yeah. you know? That's how I am, so. Respect. And Tribe gave it to me, you know, but I'm so stern on shit. Like, once you give me your word on something, you got to make sure you do that, you know? Yeah. So it's been a lot of, you know? Because that's, that's, you. You know, that's a big thing. Tribe got a real legacy to protect. Right. Yeah, so. But I'm honored that my boy gave me the chance to do that. And how does it feel to, for that to be your first uh, charting single on Billboard as a lead artist, right? That's fire. Yeah. Yeah, like the first one I would put out. Yeah, right. First one I would right, put okay. Out, charted. It's fire yeah. though. Like it just, you know, it made me think in my mind, like, damn, I should have been doing this. Yeah. I probably would have a hundred, what we said, I got 45, 45 million. Platinum 45 yeah. platinum certifications. I would probably have a hundred now. Yo. Like 45 as an artist and I mean, better, 45 that better way. Now like, you know? than never, yeah, right? Yeah. It's cool though. Yeah. It's cool. It's got me, it's got me like I'm driven right now. So hell yeah. I'm getting like my next set of singles together right now to drop them. For sure. I got um and then me and Polo G doing an album. It's pull the drop. Probably like August all my beats. Oh shoot. The first single come out June third. The video is called Distractions. He just posted the preview. It's number one on YouTube right now. Really? Just the preview. Wow. It's number one on YouTube in four right. hours. Yeah, just the, not even the video, just like the preview of the video. That's crazy. Yeah, it's trending number one in the world right now. What is your uh synergy with Polo G in the studio? Like how are you guys? Yo, he's such a special kid, bro. He is. You know, like special kids. Like I told you, Herb ain't say nothing to me. Special kid. He did the same thing. I think that's some Chicago shit. They go through so much shit, like the PTSD shit. Like, you know, that's a real thing with all them. You know, they really see a lot of their friends die young. Yeah. Like 12 years old, 11. That's I, I wasn't seeing people die 
11 and 12 and 11 and 12, I was still a kid. Like I was just trying to have sex and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? 12, I was trying to fuck something. What do you mean? I'm crying. 12, you was right. fucking. 11. All right. I was I'm already at that. I don't even want to say that because yeah. my kids was it, but I was fucking yeah. at 12. Already, you feel me? <laughs> I fucked the babysitter. You know what I'm saying? Um, yo. I was bracket. But oh. I, it's, it's, it's different for them. Like, you know, that's what was on my mind at 12. Right. My yeah. mind is like, I'm trying to have sex. They mind yeah. was on, I'm trying to stay alive. Mm-hmm. So it's just different with them. So I understand them. Yeah, That's, I think I got a connection with like Chicago. Even Dirt, we did I Have a Dirt. I was gonna ask. You feel what I'm saying? That's so it's like crazy. the whole little Chicago scene. Like yeah. I seen Spotify put that up. They had painted these pictures of like a producer with three artists. They put me with the, all the Chicago artists. Oh, because they're really like my. I don't know. That's like that's my other home. It's like my yeah. niche. They just wow. Yeah. They and then they embraced Atlanta so much. Like when Walker was going up, we stayed in Chicago. We had a song called Duct Tape. It was the biggest shit in Chicago. Like, mm-hmm. pull up, know that song right now. He, I love he was in it. Jamaica. He was, he was just playing this shit in Jamaica, singing this shit word for word in Jamaica. Had me yeah. fucked up. You feel me? So it's just I like, I love it. I always just took a liking to Chicago. Like, I don't know why. And then my my name, my name is Joshua Llewellyn. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, the Llewellyns, we come from Chicago. Oh, wow. You know, so my grandfather's Crazy. from Chicago. All of his brothers, all of them still live in Chicago. Yeah. Well, it's just in me. Like, you yeah. know? Yeah. Feel me? So. That's beautiful. Yeah. Man, you do, so you guys, you're doing the, his whole next project? Yeah, it's me, and his, it's me and his project. That's crazy. Yeah, I did every beat. Well, like me, TM, Too Dope. It's the whole 808. The okay. whole 808, Crash Dummies and, and uh, Crazy Mob all kind of combined. Yeah. All in one. I just use all of us and I'm giving everybody a shot. Yeah. Of course, I touch everything and make sure everything's the right way, but everybody a shot. So are you making beats like, because you know how Polo raps and how he sounds? Or are you making beats like push him out, you know, to do something? No, he's very, very picky. Okay. With shit like that. Like he, That's one thing I can say about him. He don't really like, you know, some people just like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to put it on there. Like, <laughs> nah. Like even Distractions, this song he's going to put out, this is a hit. It's a top yeah. 10 hit for sure. You feel me? Like, but it's the second song me and him ever made. Yeah. The first one was Young and Dumb. He just put out on the deluxe. That was the very first song we ever made. It's the second song we made. Yeah. So it's like, we we made probably like 30 or 40 songs, but he's so good at that shit. Like I understand yeah. why he's like that. Yeah. That it wasn't hard for me to put together a, a, a 18 song album. Like, you know? For sure. It's easy because he makes, he's going to sit there until he make a something, a hit at least. Like, you yeah. know? So it's good enough. Like he's very, very particular with shit. For sure. Yeah. When you are cooking up, is there ever a moment you're like, as as an artist, you're like, damn, I want this for myself. Yeah, all my beats, I'm going to put out my, I'm going to put out a rap tape right now. I made every beat on it. Okay. Yeah, I made every one of them. You feel what me? are so, you going to call it? Uh, Free Agent Four. I put out three of them, okay. so this is the fourth one. I'm Got you. Put it out. Yeah. Crazy. Hold yeah. that heat's on there. Nah, this that's tri- strictly my rap shit. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Man, um, I'm putting out another album for, our, for like all the beats with all the songs. I got some shit with ESTG. Fire. I shit with Eric, like all the new, all the new kids mixed with all the superstars, like you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be that album. That's what hold that heat song, like you know. Right. The 808 Mafia album. For sure. Yeah. That's fire. Um, I was gonna ask too, just as a father. Um, obviously I know fatherhood is everything to you. Love it. Um, man, how do you feel about the school shooting shit? I hate it. That's like. I hate it. I, I like. I don't know what I would do if I got a call that. Yeah. And my kids live in Texas. What? My kids live in. I got three kids that live in Austin, Texas. I don't know what I would do. I would, you know? Yeah. I would probably go to jail to do, just to do Damn. something. To I don't like when people do shit to kids. Like, I've been like that since we was young. Like, a girl could bring, I'll never forget this, a girl, I, they was in the house, you know, back two days, and my friends was in there, a girl going crazy, fucking with a child was sitting outside the door. I put the girl out the house. Like, I always had kids since I was young. Yeah. I don't like shit like that. Like, it ain't never been my thing. I don't like to hurt kids or... Like, I got a son that I met when he was two years old. You know, everything inside of me wanted to say, I don't want to claim it. But, like, even my big brother, we just don't do shit. That ain't us. Like, yeah. One thing I can say about us, Brick Squad, that they talk about, like, we raise our kids, all of us. Like, we not. Respect. You no, know, people put other things in the media about me. But we raise our kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we raise our kids. It's just so sad. I actually shit interviewed. Shit sad. Shit broke my heart when I wrote yeah. it. Like, you know? Yeah. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. I don't like shit like that. Facts. Those kids, kids pure. Right. Purest thing on this earth is a child. Like, you know what I'm saying? I like shit like that. Right. I interviewed um, Fred Joe Starr yesterday. Who's he, that? Fred Joe Starr? Yeah. He's part of Onyx. He's an actor too. Okay. Um, he's right. legendary from, yeah. from New York. But yeah, he's a father too. He has, um, and he was just saying he had to like tell them, like, yo, like, 
If that, you know, go under the... Ch- oh, see, my son, like my son and my daughter and them, like they grew up around us doing all kind of bullshit. Like, you yeah. know, for sure. So my son is definitely going to call my phone, but I'm not there. I'm not in Texas though, yeah. but he's going to go somewhere hot. Right. He's not going, he's not crazy. He's not going to try to fight no gun. Yeah. Might want to come back with me or something, whatever it is to fix it, but... right. He ain't crazy. He's not going to just, you know, yeah. my son going to go somewhere high. He's right. smart. They know what time it is. He's smart enough for that. Smart enough. Right. Yeah. But I just hate them kids had to go through that. Like, you know, I, right, but they just told me while I was eating, a girl put blood on her face and played like she was dead. So she didn't die. Stop. She damn made me tear up while I was eating my oh food. I was my like, God. she was crazy. Yeah. She crazy, man. Damn. My heart. I don't understand why. I don't care. I don't care how depressed I am, who I got bullied by, or if I got bullied or if somebody talked about me or whatever the fuck it was, like, I'm not going to hurt no child. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's going to take a lot out of me to whoop my kids. Like, you know, yeah. I don't even like whooping my kids. Right. You know, I love my kids. Like, I remember I took my son to school on his first day of legend. He cried so bad. And the lady was like, just let him go. I cussed the lady out all. And I'm like, no, he don't even got to come here. But he, yeah. his mama was like, he has to go there. He got to go to school. We'll get right. in trouble. So I was just like, you know, I just can't even imagine how those parents feel. Yeah. They're sitting there having to wait just to see if the child is alive. Like, sad. Prayers up down to all those families. For sure. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Six. Three okay. boys, three girls. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. And they all like different little, like, like little stages. My oldest daughter's 14 and she's like... Caught up in between trying to be like, you know, one of my, trying to be a rapper like my other baby mama, like, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's just, uh, you know, it's a lot. And yeah. I got a son that's 13. He's want to be me, want to be his uncles. You know, then I got a son that's uh, eight, one that's seven. I got a daughter that's six. She's a pure genius. <laughs> she's actually, I actually had a baby with Walker's cousin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's like a pure genius, beautiful. Aww. And then I had a baby with Carisha, with Young Miami. Right. And Summer is just like, my everything. Yeah. She's the youngest, but she's so smart. She's reading at two years old. Wow. Yeah, like, so, so smart. Beautiful, and I love her. I love her to death. She got more Instagram followers than me. Yeah, she, she get more <laughs> likes than me, too. She don't yeah. Put you, yeah. Yeah, she's a star already. Yeah. Yeah. How, I mean, I was going to just ask, how is co-parenting when both parents are in the music industry and very high demand? Me and Carisha real cool. Like, you know, no matter, like, no matter what going on, who her boyfriend is and no shit like that, like, I don't really... Like, that ain't my thing. Like, sometimes shit just don't work. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't fall for that. Like, one thing we got, we got a beautiful child out of that. Right. You know? For sure. And then she lost on her other baby father. So, I look at her other son. Like one Yo, of my, that was real sad. One of my kids, too. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, my wow. kids talk to him every day. She my right. dog, though. I always make sure Carisha's she's straight. No matter right. what. I don't fuck. What's going on? Respect that. Yeah. For sure. Uh, real quick, can we touch on 2019, Offset, Father of Four? That's my boy. He called you the day you were headed to Paris? Or he was had the day he was headed to Paris for Fashion Week. Yeah, he had booked me a flight already. And you didn't know? Uh-uh. He had booked me a first class flight. Yeah. It was like, bro. Are meet, we on that type of time? I love it. Meet me at the airport. And I was just like, right now? He like, yeah, he like in a couple of hours. Like, I'm gonna see you the shit. So I'm like, all right, bet. I wanna got some money at the bank. <laughs> didn't even pack a bag and just got my passport. No way. Just flew to Paris. Paris. They got clothes everywhere. <laughs> I just flew to Paris. Meet him in Metro. Wow. It was so fun. It was fun. That was an experience. That was my first time going to Paris. Y'all go to the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> uh, we rolled past it. Okay. I didn't go to it. We was like we was just recording and working. We recorded a lot of Father of Four over there. Wow. We was working. We did a lot of work over there. How does it feel to be able to connect with Offset on the Father Tip too? Like that's Man, me, Metro and Offset like a group. Like that's my friend. It's my real friend. Yeah. You feel I me? Mean? Like he called me yesterday. Some what funny you- shit. Like he's just funny as hell. Like it's my friend though. I love it. My real real friend. He could call me and really be himself. He can call me and tell me when I'm wrong. I could do the same to him. Call him like, nigga, you dead wrong. Like, you know, he do the same with me. That's why I, re- I fuck with him and I respect him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. I respect that. Um, 2021, you produced Thailand for Roddy Rich's second album, Live Life Live Life Fast. It was actually supposed to be on my album coming out. Oh, it was supposed shit. to be one of my singles. I just gave it to him. Oh, okay. He asked you for it? Yeah, he asked me for it back. He no. gave it to me and he asked me for it back. Oh, for my album. God. Yeah. Yeah, so I know I, that was a dope song. I loved it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. How what, how'd you tap in with him? Uh, I met Roddy from Marshmallow, Marshmallow uh, and Mo. Mo used to manage Roddy. Right. Yeah, so I met Roddy through all of that. Like you say, the director and shit. That's how I met yeah. Roddy. You know. That's crazy. And he kind of you know Roddy like Roddy was like a big Future fan like growing up. Mm-hmm. Young Roddy was like 23, 24, some shit like that. Young as yeah, hell. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying. So he's ten years younger than me, thirty three. 
Right. Yeah, so he just always like, damn, bro, big bro, I fuck with you. Like, I always loved your beats. Like, you know? Yeah. I just started working with him. I talked to him last week, I want to say. Nice. Yeah. He's special too, man. Very special. Very, very that special. Voice? He like... Actually, the album he put out, he had me a little mad. I was... I was going to ask about that. He had me a little mad. Why? Because the shit that he had, he just scratched it, like all of it. And I was like, bro, yeah. the shit he had was so crazy, bro. I couldn't stop talking about it. Like, gave me chills type shit. Really? Yeah. I don't, you know, but. You yeah. Know, that was a decision that he had to make, you know? Right. He could. You think, like, label politics had to get into that? No, nah, right. I just think he made that decision. Like, he real, you know, he young, but he real, he's a boss. Yeah. Yeah, he made his own decision, you know, and he all right. Yeah. It'll be good. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I hear you. Got a lot of time, a lot of time on his hands. Yeah. Some Bright people, future ahead of him. Some people say they took too long to drop the album after the single. I don't think so. I just okay. think, you know, you know how this shit go. Yeah. I feel like the next shit he put out is going to be crazy. Yeah. You feel me? It take that sometimes. Yeah. 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 Is it a is it hard to like once you drop a heck mega 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 hit you want to just keep dropping dropping mega hits like I wouldn't know how I feel to really drop something that's not mega because yeah. everything we ever did like with future that's it'll true. always be mega right something off of it be mega somewhat or it do mega numbers that's true yeah so I hear you um man well I was just gonna ask um how are you and your father now I know y'all went back and forth on Instagram right. Yeah, I don't talk to him. All right. You know, it's just, I got love for him. I love my pops. And my pops, he gave me, you know? Yeah. He put me in this world. I ain't know my dad growing up, though. Like, you know, I don't even call him dad. I've never called him dad, actually, ever in my life. Oh, wow. I, ever, I didn't really, really, really start knowing my dad until I was like 16 years old. Honestly. You feel me? I had my little sister and my little brothers. Their dad is a dude named Trey. Trey Jones. They call him Bones in Atlanta. Yeah. He been with me since I was two months old. Crazy. Yeah, so that's my dad. Like, that's who raised me. That's who I act like. Yeah. But I always wanted to be a producer because I always knew that he wasn't my real dad. And I knew what my real dad loved. I didn't understand why he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's cool. But, um, yeah, I'm cool. All that internet stuff, I ain't with none of that shit. You know? I hear you. Yeah. I know. That's how I am. I'm like, we're in real life, not the internet. Yeah, yeah. Like, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I let it go. My grandmama called me. Okay. And just was crying on the phone because they've never been in my life at all. Yeah. Was crying and was like, man, you know, like, you know, your dad a little jealous of you. Man. You know, and I was like, I get it. And then I had a little brother, a fam found my little brother that my dad, because my dad haven't been in none of our lives. Oh, wow. My dad got four kids. Yeah. I got a little brother I never met, blonde hair and blue eyes. Oh, my God. Yeah, I never met him a day in my life. I got a sister, blonde hair and blue eyes. She live in Atlanta, a little sister. But I had a little brother. I did meet my little brother. I haven't seen him. I hadn't seen him in like 15 years. Yeah. He died like two years ago in a car accident. That's why my dad really is just, you know, tripping. So that's why I ain't even trying to do nothing to him. I'm not looking for him or talking about him or trying to hurt him. I know you hurt. Yeah. I know he hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. And I'm who I want it to be. Right. At the end of the day. Yeah. So it'd be all right. I respect that. Yeah. Um, you actually went on record and said a lot of y'all rappers see like it's five people. Uh, a lot of y'all rappers ask. It's like five people I would send beats to right now. Can we get those five rappers? Uh, Future Thug. <laughs> okay. Lil Baby. Lil Dirt. G Herbo. It's like seven of them, eight of them right now. Exactly. Honestly, like, yeah. you know, the ones I fuck with, the right. songs, songs that come you. out. Everybody we talked about is who? Probably you. a 10 pack for real, you know? <laughs> Being a little, a little mean that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um, March 15, 2021, you were arrested on weapons charge in South Florida. Ooh. Yeah, that was a funny situation. Yeah, they threw it out in two weeks. They didn't put that on the news. Oh, really? I never even stepped in the courthouse. Two weeks. I had the gun license and I had a gun and I had driver's license. Right. I had both. So yeah. the police really was doing some racist shit like they yeah. did everybody else. Because I was the first person, first person in Miami on a Maybach trip. Right. Marshmallow bought me a Maybach truck for my birthday. Did he really? Yeah. So when I pulled up, I actually wasn't even driving my truck. I was sitting in the valet, waiting on the valet to come get the keys. The police walked up on the truck. So it was like, everything they did was wrong. I'd never even stepped in the courthouse ever and ever. Not one time. That's crazy. Two weeks, it was throughout. I've never made it to a court date. Were you worried at all in the beginning? I had gun, I had an actual physical gun license. Right, right, right. With a blue strip of Florida gun license. Right. You know, I got a house in Florida. Yeah. You know, so. No, I wasn't, I wasn't really, I really was laughing. Like, it was yeah. kind of funny. And then the, I kept telling the uh, police, I was like, uh, I'm a producer. He was like, yeah, sure, everybody's a producer. I'm dead. So it's so funny. They take me in the, um, like the, the little hole and shit, like for the main jail. When I get in there, it's like 20 people in there. Everybody tripping though. Like, hey, 808, what's up? What's yeah. up? 
even all the CO girls, like they know who <laughs> my baby mama was in Miami, like, you know? Yeah. So that shit, I was out in like two hours. Yo! But yeah. I love it. But they figured it out. Then they went to the news when they left and said they locked me up. Like uh, I was just a menace. Like, yeah. I had both of those guns was legal. It was just me and Carisha in the car. She was in the car with me. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So down there, I have to ride around like that. We don't have no bodyguards with us. Yeah. And I have a gun license. Yeah. Like, you know? So, but it was all right. Got through out in two weeks. That's so funny. I remember doing an interview on Zoom with the City Girls and Carisha was in the car with you. I'm just remembering this now. She was in the car with me? Yeah. And she probably, I probably was loud too. <laughs> you were driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's funny as yeah, hell. Yeah, it's funny. Super funny. Man. Um, mm -hmm. well, I was going to say, if Marshmallow gets you a Maybach truck for your birthday, what are you getting him? He won't let us buy him shit. Like, uh, he's like, he's so rich. Yeah. <laughs> like, he don't let us really, like, he don't even be like, save your money, man. Like, that's the, that's the nicest person I know in life, bro. Marshmallow, that's bro. so funny. Yeah, like, he don't, like, you know? He like, 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 I could go get him right now. I could make Waka go rap a song, rap on one of his beats or something for his birthday. <laughs> he's happy he gonna play that shit all day like yeah. some shit like that like you know yeah so that's my boy though that's yeah my friend you ever think about doing like a future marshmallow like yeah if, if marshmallow wanna do it I'm gonna get it done for him yeah. whatever it is I'm gonna do it that's my real friend I'm gonna get it done for him yeah for you sure you heard it here first on Vlad TV okay yeah if he <laughs> want it done I'm gonna do it for right. sure that's funny um man well what are you most excited for next what you got you know obviously um what am I most excited for next? Oh, I'm excited for my album. I'm excited for this polo album to come out. This polo right. single. Me and her put out another, The Last Swervo, Big Swerve. Facts. Yeah. I do, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, so, you know, um, I'm excited for everything I got, I got about to come out. Yeah. Um, you know, Future Album did exceptionally good, this right. one. Right. I'm very, very happy for that. Like, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of this. Yeah. This culture. Right. You know? Speaking of culture, I forgot to ask this. I'm sorry. But, you know, it's just like hip hop. I just feel like it's crazy what's happening in hip hop. But yeah, what are your thoughts on just the YSL Rico case? Free Thug, Free Gunna. Free Thug and Free Gunna. Yeah. Free Gunna. They not going to make an example out of them. Right. Thug is a very genuine person, you know? It takes out a lot of people, probably over 250 people a month. Fast. Easy. Like, you know, so that's a very genuine person. They're hurting a lot of kids and a lot of people, you know? So free my brother. Can't wait to get out so we can continue to make music. Right. Yeah. Do you feel any type of way about rap lyrics being used against them? It's a job. At the end of the day, it's a job. Yeah. Like, you know, that boy get a million dollars a show. How is he running yeah. a criminal enterprise? It don't even right. make sense. It's a job for him to rap. Thug's sit in the studio more than anybody I know. Fact. Literally, like, like future, like, you know? So it's just like, you know, I feel bad for my brother because I know how much he loves to make music. Like, you know? Right. I know how much he loves his kids and his family and his siblings. Right. You know, so free my brother. For sure. Yeah. I agree. Um, I just want to ask, do you have a favorite tattoo of yours? Uh, I just like tattoo on my face. You do like it? I love tattoo on okay. my face. Future just told me like, bro, please no more tattoos yeah. on my face. You feel me? So my mom said the same thing. Like my new girlfriend now said the same thing. <laughs> like I was just, I love tattoo on my face. I don't know why. I feel like it gives people character. It I do. Yeah, it does. Do you have a favorite on your face? Uh, I got so much shit out, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what's on my face. Shit. You look in the mirror, you're like, oh shit. Wu, Wu told me to get got beats on my face. Oh, oh shit. my eyebrow. Wu told me that. That's one of my favorite tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the bear. That's the bear right. with the idea right there. He was like, if you don't think you should do it, but if you're going to do it, that'll be hard if you get that. Like, you yeah. know, I was like, yeah, come on, tat it. Let's get it. That's hilarious. Yeah, let's get it. You know? It should be hurting or no? Not a face don't hurt. I got some of this stuff done twice. And I got like all my kids' names in my face. Like I got oh, Carly. Okay. I got Summer at the bottom. My nephew Cash on my head. Like yeah. I tap like things that really mean something to me in my for face. Sure. I want you to see it. I'm wearing it. Yeah. Every day. See it in my face. Is it spontaneous for you? Or are you like, all right, today? It's just something that means something. Yeah. Like you know now people say, you know, you wear you wear your feelings in your face, you know? Yeah. Or you wear your feelings. Right. This is everything that means something to me in my yeah. face. Don't disrespect none of it. Right. You know? For sure. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Man, is there anything else that we should know? Anything you're working on besides, like, outside of music, maybe? Oh, uh, I'm just investing. Okay. You know, investing in whatever's going to make me money. Right. Yeah. Like, what, do you, you know. what do you like to do when you're not working? Obviously, family. But do you like something that you can chill, you know? Uh, when I'm not working, 
Um, like I just you not know, like to ride like dirt bike with four wheelers and shit. I just broke my ankle on a dirt bike. Oh shit! I'm sitting on a castle right now, actually. Oh wow! I went and bought my manager a Supreme dirt bike and rode, and I fell on it. Oh. <laughs> and broke my ankle. I cut my own cast off too. You good? Yeah, I'm. Actually, I'm fine. You just seen me walking yeah, and bowling right, yesterday. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool though. Makes sure all of them was like, bro, don't cut that shit off. Yo. I'm like this shit coming off. I gotta put on two shoes. I gotta be fresh, you know. Yeah. So, but I don't like. I'm just some wild. I like to do shit that just yeah. Give me an adrenaline rush. Yeah. You know, adrenaline is like a drug to me. For sure. Do yeah. you work out? Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cheeks. <laughs> That's about it. You know. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm crying, man. Obviously, you worked with everyone. Is there someone you want to work with that you haven't yet? That I want to, that I haven't worked with. Uh, I would love to get Pharrell to rap on something for my album. Oh, sh- rap, not produce? Rap. I don't okay. know produce. He's fine as a rapper. Right. He's fine. He's a legend as a producer, but yeah. as an artist, like, he made happy. Right. It's like, to steal the timeless song, like, you know? Yeah. That's Pharrell. Like, yeah. I would love to get Pharrell to rap on something. For sure. For man, sure. Man, we're going to manifest that right now. Yeah. Man, well, thank you for coming on Black TV. Thank y'all for having me. Appreciate you. I appreciate y'all a lot, too.